Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to a Phyrexia All Will Be One draft. We're going to go pick by pick, play by play, talk through everything so you know what to do when you draft the format yourself. If you enjoy the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe for more content, comment below with your questions, thoughts, and feedback. We're going to kick things off with a Thrun, Breaker of Silence, which is basically unbeatable, unless your opponent's, like, very specifically playing green and has a fight spell right away. The fact that it's indestructible on your turn means it's unblockable pretty much just clocks them for five they can't kill it they can't counter it this card is unreal if it wasn't in the pack i think rebel salvo is really good three mana deal five furnace punisher is good three mana three three menace and canker bloom is solid as a two mana three two with some extra abilities in the commons i think the anoint with affliction is the best common but i think rebel salvo is better three mana deal five just kills a lot of stuff that this thing does not quite kill. So, starting off with the Thrun here. After that, I would have taken Rebel Salvo. So, we already have a Thrun, so we are very incentivized to play green, which means that this Contagious Vorak is very appealing to me, because I really think it's a great card, and really one that I'm happy to take early. Especially because I just want to play this Thrun. If I didn't have a reason to play green, the Jawbone Duelist is really nice, because it can apply two Toxic early, Double Strike is just a good ability in Limited, so this card would probably be my second pick. There's also Duelist of Deep Faith, which is pretty good. These two uncommons aren't particularly great. But yeah, I like Vorak, and then after that I would take the Duelist. If this was pack one, pick one, I would maybe take the Duelist over the Vorak, just because I think Duelist is quite nice as a two-drop. Okay, so now we have two green cards, and we are confronted with a pack that doesn't really have green. It's not really a call cause for alarm yet. Because the rare and an uncommon are missing, and so this could just be a pack that's weak in green, so you don't have to be like, oh no, there's no green cards. Resistance Skywarden is a card I've wanted to try out a little bit, see how it feels. Menace Reach on a 5-5 five five is pretty nice. There's also Icker Plate Golem, so if I end up with an oil red-green deck, this could do good work. So red-green is a good deck to end up in. Black-green can do stuff. Green-white. I think Thrun and Vorak are better in red-green, because you just get some beefier creatures and you don't care about poison with these cards. Uh, Shepherd's a nice top end card. Devotion is a nice one. Crawling Chorus, I haven't really tried. But I think we might try the Resistant Sky Warden, the Axiom Engraver, or the Icker Plate Golem. Maybe we'll take the Golem, try this guy out. It's colorless. I can probably play it even with only a couple of green cards. And it lets me delay what, what I'm going to go with, because even if I play a green deck, I might end up with some counters on things. And so, yeah, I like that option. And now there's a Hex Gold Hullbird. Really nice two drop for a red green deck. There's Axiom Engraver. That's another, uh, like, red green card. It's more of a mid range card. A 1 3 doesn't really beat down well, but you do need two drops. And it plays well with the Golem that I have. But I'm going to take the Hullbird. Giving a, a Thrun first strike is really good, or a Vorak first strike is good. And this card's just great. After that, it's closer. Uh, there's a lot of green cards in this pack, which makes me happy. For the success of my deck. There's also a Flensing Raptor and a Grit Engraver, but I probably would take the Engraver just to get a two drop. I don't really love the Rustvine Cultivator, but I could try it out again. Or I've never actually played it, but I've never really been impressed. Here there's a Volt Charge. I like that. I've not been impressed by the Barbed Batterfist, I will say, just because it feels like there's a decent number of ways to punish one toughness creatures. And like, I don't know, I feel like tokens can get punished as well. But I probably just had a small sample size. It just feels like the token gets bounced or they, they give it minus one, minus one, and I get wrecked. So I like Volt Charge a lot better, but I do still want to have a lot of 2-drops. So I only have one 2-drop right now, but still early days. There's a card that I don't think is very good. It's kind of a trap, because I don't think you can afford to play this on turn 2 in the format. Raptor is, like, mediocre as a 3-drop. Rib Skip does good work sometimes, but we're not really toxic. Easy Volt Charge. And now there's a Furnace Strider as a top-end card. Late Planar Disruption, though. And there's a Testament Bearer as well, so maybe we're supposed to audible into white... But I think taking three red cards in a row, especially because we already have a good start to an oil deck, if we have our golem in play, this comes in as a five mana, five, six haste. So the golem really plays well with what we have going on. It's really good in red-green specifically, which is one of the reasons I took it. So yeah, I think we'll take the Furnace Strider. I think Planar Disruption can be good, though. And now there is a Blazing Crescendo. There is a Maze's Mantle. Unctus's Retrofitter is actually a fantastic card. Uh, just turning something into a 4-4 is just a huge stats boost. But I don't think we have a real reason other than like that to 
go for a blue deck. And we have Thrun, so we really want to play green. And we see enough support, like a couple of combat tricks. And I think Blazing Crescendo is good. Molten Rebuke a little bit inefficient, but sometimes you have to play it. Okay, now there's a weird ramp card that we aren't going to play. There's an Engulfer, which we don't want to play. There's a Plague Nurse, which we don't want to play. Then there's a couple blue cards, and there's a Skull Bomb. I'm tempted to just take the Skull Bomb in case we want to switch into red-white. We do still only have two green cards. We could open a good white card in pack two. Um, but we are seeing a decent amount of green here. What? We wield Furnace Punisher. This card's insane. Three mana, three, three. Menace is just a great card. So really happy to see that. Free from Flesh and Oil Gorger Troll are also both playable in these colors, I think. So this is a really good pickup for us. And now another Blazing Crescendo. Awaken the Sleeper is more of a red-black card because you want to be able to sacrifice the thing. Spore Singer is sometimes okay, I think, but easy Blazing Crescendo. We've just been taking all red cards. Another red card, Axiom Engraver, can play well in this deck. Forge Hammer Centurion. Maybe we'll play this. There's a Titanic Growth, but we don't need to prioritize that ever. Not that we really care about the Forge Hammer. We'll take the Engulf for now. Last pick, Testament Bearer is kind of crazy. So we've got not really a ton of green, but we still have this Thrun. Still have a lot of cards to care about oil, which red green cares about. So I think we're still leaning towards red green. Here there's another Icker Plate Golem, which can play well with like the Axiom Engraver. But I think we'll just take the Armored Scrap Gorger. Great two drop for this sort of deck. And really just lines like gets oil and lets us play our big guys a little bit sooner, so that's good for us. Icker Plate Golem is also nice. This card can be good in these sorts of decks, but this is probably going to wheel. This pack is kind of weak other than the Scor Gorger and the Golem. Golem might wheel if nobody else is in our kind of oil strategy. Uh, free from Flesh might wheel, so we could play that. But yeah, pretty easy go uh, the Gorger. And then this thing doesn't really do what you want. It's kind of good because you can copy the Golem, but there's not really a ton of artifacts you can copy with it. Let's look at our curve. We have, these are combat tricks, so they're not two drops. We have three two drops. And, uh, yeah. Okay, this is an interesting spot. Uh, because there is a, uh, Serum Core Chimera, which would be a good in a blue-red oil deck. And we don't have a lot of reason to be green other than this Thrun. But Thrun is, like, unbeatable. Like, I had it in my pre-release. And every time I played Thrun, I just won the game very easily, except for like one game where it was the only spell I could cast, because I drew all lands the entire game, other than the Thrun. That was a weird game, by the way. So normally Thrun's like unbeatable. Drowned Icor is really good, and Black might be open, because we got a last pick Testament Bearer. But I still think Thrun is better to lean towards. There's a Furnace Strider as another 5-drop, but I think I'd rather either take the Sprinter or just the Axiom Engraver to get a 2-drop, because getting enough 2-drops is really important. I don't think you can really have enough 2-drops in this set, Getting a fourth one is nice. It might wheel. We might wheel the Blazing. We might wheel the Furnace Strider, but I like getting Axiom. This card's really good. Really good. Really good black cards we're seeing here. I think I'm just going to stay the course, though. Stick with my guns. Ground and Nicker's really nice, but I think Thrun is more than enough power to compensate us for staying green. We'll take the Batter Fist and hopefully not play it. I I've not been super impressed by this card. Okay, and now we get a Rustvine Cultivator. Jorkadeen. This card can do some work. We didn't see a ton of white. Pack one. Plus X, X number of equipped creatures. We have... Only one. We have two of the equipments. I think that's probably better than Rustvine Cultivator. We'll speculate. Furnace Punisher versus Vorak is interesting. I think Furnace Punisher is better if you're an aggressive deck. Because a 3-3 Menace is so good. There's also Resistance Reunited. We're also guaranteed to play red, whereas we might switch out of green. I do love me a Vorak, but I think that 3-3 Menace for 3 is just really good. It plays great with Blazing Crescendo, because they'll have to double block it and then you... Basically get two of their creatures. So yeah, we'll take the Furnace Punisher. And no. 
Yeah, we'll take this guy. This card can sometimes be okay, but we'll just get lock up one copy of Rebuke. Chimney Rabble's a card I've been hearing a lot about, so I'm going to try it. A lot of folks are really enjoying playing with this card, from what I've heard in the community. So we'll give it a shot. There's also a two drop, but we have one, two, three, four, five two drops right now. So going into middle of pack two, we're in okay shape. Fuseling is great, I think, here. Because it cares about oil, and when our stuff dies, it'll grow over time. It's another equipment if we wanted to try and switch into white for the Jorka Dean. But I think Fuseling is good enough to be worth taking here as a one drop. We wield free from flesh, as I anticipated. And another Blazing Crescendo. I don't really want to play the Furnace Skull Bomb. It's like okay, but I think it's better to just keep taking these combat tricks. Sure, we'll take Sleeper or Overthrill. We don't really care about either. We have a lot of playables here. Engraver plays well with Blazing Crescendo. Like, high toughness creatures play well with it. We'll take another 2-drop. You never know when you'll just need a random extra one. I feel like you can really never have enough 2-drops in this format, because you just want to make sure you never miss your 2-drop. We're going to cut the Forge Hammer Centauri on this card. It's not very good. Hopefully we don't have to play this Molten Rebuke. All these other cards I'm fairly happy playing. This would be a first cut if we can get enough 2s. This is another card I would cut fairly happily. We're not going to be lacking on 2-drops, so we don't have to like bias our picks too much. All of our other cards are pretty good. The Golem plays well with the Engravers. But ideally, we can cut these three guys. Interesting. Urbrask's Forge. You just create a big creature every turn. So you start with a 1-1, one, one, but it goes away, so you can't really do much with it. We're going to take Hex Gold Slash here. The other cards in this pack just aren't doing much. Urbrask's Forge is interesting, but I think it's just too slow. Because it doesn't block. So if you fall behind, it doesn't do anything. And Hex Gold Slash is the opposite. It does everything when you're behind. It's just like perfect card to have on turn one on the draw. Which is kind of what I like to build my decks around. So I think this card's excellent. Really easy pick up here. And now we see another Axiom Engraver. There's also a Furnace Strider for the top end. We're just going to keep taking Axiom Engravers. We already have a decent amount of top end. We might wheel this Oil Gorger Troll or this Furnace Strider. We probably won't wheel the Furnace Strider. That card's great, but Axiom Engraver just rock solid. Fuels my other cards. Make sure I never flood. Pretty happy to get that guy. Okay, here. Huh. There's a Silvok Battle Chair, which I can use as just a way to make all of my creatures massive in the late game. And there's an Oil Gorger Troll as a top end card. That's always going to draw me a card, pretty much, I think. Or at least I hope. I'm going to take the Battle Chair. I think it just gives me some much more, some nice late game for a deck that already has good early game. And uh, I'm pretty happy to see that. Excellent. We get an Exuberant Fuseling, another early game play. I like this. I like it a lot, actually. I wouldn't mind an Oil Gorger Troll, probably, but. Every card we add at this point, we get to cut one of these bad ones. The Barb Batterfist and the Shrapnel Slingers. We have three, four, five, plus a one drop there. So we're going to add that card and cut a Shrapnel Slinger. Oh my goodness, what a pack. So this one has a Vindictive Flame Stoker, which is great. And a Volt Charge, which is also great. I think I'm going to take the Flame Stoker, though. Another one drop. And we have a decent number of non-creature spells. Nine currently. Um, so just gets oil early and can let us cash in for cards late. Plays well with like Blazing Crescendo, F Free from Flesh. I think it's just going to be a good card in our deck. I don't think Volt Charge is fine, but I have not been overwhelmingly impressed by it. Where is that little guy's really good? Ooh, nice Hex Gold Slash number two. We're not going to fall behind with this deck. This is going to be great. There's another Blazing Crescendo. There's a Vorak. I love both those. This card's also solid, but easy Hex Gold Slash. And it was just like that. We've gotten rid of all the cards that we kind of wanted to from this pack. Wow, Bladehold War Whip came back. So if we didn't have the Thrun and we wanted to play like an equipment deck, we could totally do that with the Jorka Dean and the Bladehold War Whip. 
We do have some equipment synergies, but we're going to take a Furnace Punisher here. Get ourselves another great 3-drop. And a Furnace Strider for the top end. We don't need more 1-drops. We already have a lot. I don't love this card on baseline, so we get a Furnace Strider. I don't know if we need the Silvoff Battle Chair at this point. We could also start, start like cut one Blazing Crescendo. Sure, we'll take the Cackler. We're not going to really want that, I don't think, though. Free Furnace Punisher is really nice. Makes me want to... Ooh, the Furnace Strider wield. Nice. So yeah, with three of these guys, I don't think we need the Battle Chair. Especially because we can loot away extra lands with these guys. Free from Flesh number two. Free from Flesh is really good with the Fusling, so I'm definitely going to play that over Blazing Crescendos. I think. That's my current strategy. So our removal package is two Hex Gold Slashes, a Volt Charge. Our three drop slot looks amazing. We have this Chimney Rabble, which I honestly want to cut. Because <laughs> I'd rather play a Blazing Volley, I think. Blazing Crescendo. Like, Chimney Rabble just seems out of place in this deck. Four mana for a 3-3 three, three and a 1-1. One, one. It's like, okay. But I think just having another combat trick is better for us. People have been saying this card's good, but I, and I want to try it. But I'm tempted to either just... I don't want to add Barb Batterfist because it does not play well with the Fuselings, which are a key part of our strategy. Um, I don't want to add this. I don't want to play the Crescendo. I mean, I do kind of want to play the Crescendo is what I'm trying to add. So we'll have, we have one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. I don't think we're going to not have stuff to do in the early turns. I like all these Furnace Striders at the top end. So maybe I'm supposed to cut one of them. I could also go down to 16 lands. Because my deck is super cheap. Mm -hmm. This card's good, but I think it's not necessarily what I need. I think this is a card we could consider. And then some number of these, and then this card. So that's all the cards we'll think about adding. So this is 45. We have to cut a few cards here. If we want to go down to 16 lands, there's definitely a possibility of doing that. I want to keep these free from the fleshes because they're so good with the fuselings. They're pretty good with my other cards too. I've not been impressed by the batter fist, so I think I'm going to cut it. I think I have enough early game without it. Then Blazing Crescendo. We definitely don't need all three copies of this and the Free From Fleshes. So I'm going to cut two of those. I think we want the third combat trick, though. We have two more cuts to make. I'm going to cut the Chimney Rabble. And then I'm going to cut the Battle Chair. And then I'm going to cut a land and add in another Blazing Crescendo. Try it like this, I think. Sure, we have some early game stuff, but we also have the Axiom Engravers. We have... Two Blazing Crescendos, we have the Armored Scrap Gorger and the Vorak to help us with mana. So I think 16 lands is fine. And these guys can help us avoid Flood as well. And our deck is very heavily skewed towards red, so I don't think we need to go too much Forest. So yeah, we're going to try it like this. We'll see how we can do. A couple of Blazing Crescendos, a couple of Free From Fleshes. Some good stuff going on. I'll see you folks in the games. If you've been enjoying my channel, you can support it at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. Patrons gain access to exclusive bonus content, like my draft tier list for Phyrexia All Will Be One, where I grade every card in the set on an A through F scale and compile it into a handy dandy spreadsheet. I'd like to give a special shout out to the patrons who support at the credits level. And if you have been enjoying my content and would like to help the channel, you can do so at Patreon. Thank you to all of my patrons, and without further ado, let's get to the games. Welcome to round number one. We have Exuberant Fusling plus Free from the Flesh, the perfect combo. So hopefully they play a 2-drop and then try to block me. That's the dream scenario. No, Blade Hold War Whip. Mm -hmm. 
I do have Thrun. So if I find one green, I can then play the Thrun. I guess I'm taking four here. I really need a forest. Uh, not good. That's not good for me. so bad. This costs five to equip. Funnily enough, if I had that chimney guy here, the four mana for the three three would have been nice to block. Instead of a Furnace Strider. Oh, God. A little late land. Just a tad late. Yep. And it's game. Okie doke. See you folks next round. The round, we'll keep this. Bum, bum, bum. Oh my gosh, they're off to the races here. Okay, so they've got a 3-1 and a 1-1. I might kill this with my Hex Gold Slash. Doke, no blocks. Mm. I'm not sure what to think of this card. It looks bad to me. Char Forger. We block. Ditch the other engraver, maybe? Or we ditch the land. I think we ditch the land. I don't think we care about the lands. We can just play another engraver. Perfect. Fusling, engraver. We're off to the races. I could have attacked them and then tried to use Hex Gold Slash. But I didn't really want to. I kind of want to save my Hex Gold Slash for an actual good target. And I kind of want to hold my 3-3 back for blocking purposes.
I wonder if you, I think Fuseling's good with the combat tricks I have in this deck. Because giving it two more oil counters and plus two plus two for a turn is pretty nice. Because it turns that oil, that one combat trick into a plus four plus two. Okay, that's a good card to kill with my Hexfold Slash. They're going to manage to get another card out of this. So we get to play this, and we get to have our Hexfold Slash up. So if I attack them with two things, they're going to like double block that way. Get the two things on that. I think that's fine. I'll also get an oil counter on my guy. Sure. Oh, gosh. Okay, I don't think that card's that good, though. I'm pretty sure it wasn't insane. Ethic Crucible Goliath. Like, they can attack something and then get something that's smaller. Okay, another one of those guys is great. So I can trade this thing for, like, their saw blade scamp and that guy or something. This overkill, play my new one. I think that's good. This is also a fine outcome for me. Chat says needing three counters for this feels steep. The thing is, it's already just a good card on rate. Three mana for a 2-3 into 1-1 one, one is just good. Okay, I'm not particularly scared of Toxic in their deck. It feels like they're not really maximizing that, probably. Maybe they have one or two corrupted cards, and that's why they're playing this. Hmm. I'm not going to block. It opens me up to them having a combat trick, which I don't want. And I now have pretty good attacks with my re threes. And I can play Furnace Strider as a really good, like, kind of top end card here. That's a good draw. We'll attempt to do this. They could have a combat trick still. Nice. Maybe they have a deal too as well. So next turn I can play my Furnace Strider. Cutthroat Centurion could be annoying. Because they can double block and then sack this thing to make it this 4 4 to deal with these guys.
Okay. That could be really good. I'll get rid of their Char Forger. And I'm not going to attack because I want to play Hexgold Halberd and equip it next turn for this thing. Because then I have some really good attacks, I think. Because they can't really block a 4 5 that has first strike and trample very well. Okay, so they make another cutthroat century, and that's pretty good. Sure. Well, that is pretty nice. Hmm, so now can I... T I'm just going to hold back on blocks. Stop them from attacking me. And then next turn I have my combat trick to kind of do good work. I still have this engraver to make sure I don't draw any lands for a little bit. They're going to pass with all their mana, aren't they? I'm glad that they don't have Corrupted enabled yet, so I don't have to worry about them using that instant speed kill spell. Well, that's a fantastic draw. Mm-hmm. I can attack with everything, I think. Sure. Four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So I actually have them dead here. If they don't have a kill spell for my fuseling here. This is a very aggressive play by me. So they do have that card. Interesting. That's unfortunate. Hmm. Sure. Oh my gosh, they can sacrifice that thing. Oh no. They're taking seven here. Should I have attacked with this thing? Eight, nine, ten. Oh no, I don't think I could I don't couldn't have killed them then. Still. I'm turning through their sack fodder, but that did not work out. I was hoping to kill them this turn. Oh well, I got greedy. They're still taking seven here. Didn't work out very well. 
Probably should have just attacked with the Furnace Strider. I got greedy. If they didn't have this thing, I would have been able to kill them. But, not my best attack I've ever had. Let first strike damage resolve. And do that. This thing still dies, which is nice. I should have left up an extra red mana. So now I have my menace guy and this too too. They have another one of those. That's super annoying. If I attack with all three, they can't double block this and block both of these guys. So they'll either have to take this from this guy and then double block my menace guy. I think this is the attack. It might look like I'm throwing this guy away, but they don't I don't think they can afford to block it. Yeah, perfect. First deal damage to that guy. I might have even been supposed to attack with this Axiom Engraver. Got the win. Bounced back from that horrifying attack step. And got the win anyway. Axiom Engraver did major work there. Ooh, rank up. Nice. See you folks next round. To another round. On the play, we have a 1-drop, 2-drop, into 3-drop. Ah, the crawling. If this blazing crescendo works out, that'd be sick. Oh, and we hit the land so we can just play it straight up. Sure, they'll get a mic token and they'll hit me for one poison, but I keep my guy around. Could be worth. They're playing red-white, so it doesn't even matter. Let's go. No! My Volt Charge. I really hope they don't have Incisor Glider right now. I get some decent blocking out of this deal. This can block the Might. This can block that guy. I can hit him. I'm at four poison against Red White. Yikes. Just don't Incisor Glider me. 
Flensing Raptor shirt. That I can live with. They have a fuse link. That's less good for me. Oh, nice. I'm playing this first because I can give Thrun haste next turn. So it's like this, it's just way more damage this way. As long as this lives, it's just more damage. So they get to hit me for two. Okay. Hex gold halberd, sure. Okay, it's only from opponents. I almost thought I botched it by, like, not being able to target my own guy. Gotta be said, poison is more relevant than I thought it would be, considering their colors. And I can even discard this land. No! Can they actually kill my furnace rider? That would be, that'd be really bad. Okay. Give that thing haste. They're not playing green, so they can't target it. If they had the affinity kill spell... Oh my gosh. They definitely should have done that at a different time. They just let me give my guy haste. So I could bring the beat down. Oh, they haven't read the card. Reading the card explains the card, opponent. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. They... That's, like, just... Just not what you like to see. Well, that's insane as well. I'm gonna probably try to kill the Flensing Raptor here. I can attack with this, and then, like, they block it and I kill the thing, but that still doesn't quite kill them. Oh my gosh. My thing has indestructible, my friend. I would have been close to killing them because this can become a four or five or five five or something. Because no, this doesn't get. It could just get buffed from the proliferate. If they give it double strike, then I kill it. Okay, sure. So if I kill this, then I hit them for five, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Got there. Oof. Our deck is cruising. Nice. Though, that game could have gone differently if they had understood the cards a bit better. See you folks next round. Welcome to another round. We're going to keep this. We have a kill spell, a two drop, a three drop that makes our guys better. As much as it pains me, I think I might use my slash on this. So I think I'm going to wait. I think I'll take the damage from this and then try to kill whatever they play on turn two because that's going to be scarier. Okay, they have another one on turn two. Well, that's unfortunate. I thought they would maybe play like a Toxic Flyer or something. I'm going to play the Scrap Gorger and hold up the Slash. Uh, 
Nice. We're in good shape right now. Oh, okay. I should have used that guy, I forgot. I was planning on using it and then I just... I was like, what if I don't instead? Sure. I definitely would have been happy if I'd used that because I could have played my Thrun then. Yikes. I'm going to play the land so I can hold up my combat trick maybe. Even though I have this guy, but I only have one counter left on that guy. And I don't really want to lose it because I have my golem. Oh, gosh. I was expecting a more impressive enemy. Just give up already. Taking down Kaya is nice. And I'm going to pitch this extra land. And I'm going to hope that I can find an answer to this thing. Which I don't know if I have really any. Actually, no, that's not true. Okay, pass, blocks. They just really wanted to corrupt me, I guess. Ah, oh, crud. Oh, man. Three... 8, 9, 10, 14. We almost killed them. Eight, eleven, sixteen, twenty. This is an attack for twenty three. If they hadn't had Kaya, we could have got him. Or if they had no blockers this turn. Yeah. I'm dead on board. Oh, that was close. Almost had him. Almost had him. See you folks next round. Welcome to another round. We're going to keep this on the play without a two drop. 
Hopefully we can find one. Nice! I never doubted it for a second. This is going to attack as a 2-4 thanks to this guy. And this will come in with an extra oil. Let's go. Furnace try to being a 5-6 haste is nice. Oh no. No! Gosh darn it. It's 4-4 four, four Vigilance is going to kill me. Are they really just going to take it? Oh my gosh. No! This is so bad! No! No, 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 no! I need to find my direct damage spell. Oh my gosh, if I can deal three to them, maybe... Oh no. No, 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 no. This is bad. This is so bad. I'm so toast. The thing even has vigilance, so it gets to block. No, they're gonna bounce my strider. Wait, what? Why aren't they bouncing it? There's still hope. Okay, they're blocking that, so this thing will turn into a 1-1 and I can kill it. They're also at this, and this will give plus three, plus three. Please work. Yes! The plan worked! No! Yes! It worked! Oh my gosh, so the reason it gave plus three, plus three is because this thing gets buffed for oil counters, but it doesn't come oil counters on its own. Also, Twitch chat is pointing out that the 2-3 has toxic, which I forgot about, because I always think of the other line of text. So I could have killed it and not taken any damage. Oh, reading the card explains the card. Thanks, Twitch chat. I'm glad that you told me that at the very end of that game, when it was least useful to me, but I could still re recognize my horrendous blunder before YouTube comments told me that I had a horrendous blunder. Not as bad as not using the Skull Bomb. That was pretty bad. But uh, Hex Gold slashing that thing would have taken, like, six less damage. Would have been nice. Whew, got the win. See you next round. The round on the play, one, two, three. Perfect start with a removal spell. I think it's really good to have a one-drop in this format. It has felt very good, at least. This thing on the play is disgusting. Skull bomb. Ba -ba -dum. Chad asks if this is the newest set. It is indeed. If you're watching on YouTube and you want to catch the stream live, check it out. Twitch.tv slash Nikolai Bolas. Oh, this is good against Toxic. Luckily, we aren't going to be playing Toxic cards, opponent. I believe none of our cards have Toxic. It would be pretty funny to attack them with this thing. <laughs> and be like, hey, I'm hitting you with my 0-3. Block it. We're not going to do that, though. It would be funny. Because they just won't block, and then my Blazing Crescendo won't get to do what I want it to do. And Blazing Crescendo is going to be good with this guy as well. Chat says, what's up? Not much, what's up with you?
opponent trying to go on the beat down. Okay. Probably successfully. That's a pretty good beatdown card. I'm going to be honest. Uh, I'm not a big fan of facing down that guy. Yikes. Run. Well, that's a good card. I'm willing to two for myself against the Miglaws. Okay, Miglaws, do your worst. Give yourself plus four, plus four, and crush me. Chad asks if I like this set more than Bro. To be honest, I thought Brothers War was fine. I think this set's fine. They're neither neither of them is particularly insane. I feel like this one has more glaring weaknesses as a format. Oh my gosh. No, 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 no. They can get plus. Plus two, plus two, plus two, plus two, plus four, plus four. They're hitting me for seven, and I can swing back for five, eight. Definitely don't want to block big laws, but do I want to block this? No, I do not. Because I'm definitely ahead, and Thrun is a really good attacker. Favorite draft set from the last two years? That's what Twitch chat asks. Um, buffing their guy? What? Looking for lances. Five, eight, and then I can hold back these guys. Favorite set last two years. There's been, there have been some pretty good ones. I like Zendikar Rising. I really liked Ikoria. Mm -hmm. I'm holding this guy back as an extra blocker. Just in case. And I'll play the land. I don't have any reason not to. And if I exile something, I might want to play that. have that land available. This thing doesn't get trampled, right? It just gains menace. They only have so much mana. I'm fairly certain they have a combat trick. Probably plus four, plus four. Okay. Depending on what they play here, I can Hex Gold slash it. Okay, Rib Skiff, sure. That's actually really good for me. Because if they crew that with their Malira, I can kill it for one mana. And even if they can give it Indestructible or something, I can then win with Blazing Crescendo. Yes! Thrun! 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 Oh my gosh. That was crazy. I wonder what their combat trick was. Whew. See you folks next round. Welcome to another round. We're going to mulligan this. We're one mountain short. We have two draw steps to hit a mountain. And it only likes good enough with only nine mountains in the deck. We'll keep this though and we'll ditch the free from flesh. We want the, the ability to make up our card advantage with this thing. Blue, you say? You say blue mana is needed. Gosh darn it. Malkator. 
Your watcher is everywhere. Okay, we'll play our scrap gorger. Chat says they think that archive slots are really good in packs, like in Strixhaven and Brothers War. I think it's cool when they do it sparingly. It can be, I think, detrimental if they do it too much, because it just makes it more confusing for new players to know what's going on. If the cards are already in the set, it's kind of kind of nice sometimes to just have normal stuff. Oh, they almost have all uh, two non-basics. I wonder how many artifacts they will play. Ah, oh, the theorist. The eye of Malakator is waking. I wonder if they're going to be able to turn it on every turn. That would be bad for me. I don't want to use my removal spell to kill their 1-1. One, one. I should have used this. I forgot they discarded a card. Can I afford to send in? I think so. Okay, Malkator's eye is watching. Lots of looting shenanigans. I have Malkator always wrecks me because I'm never willing to trade cards for it. Never have to worry about that one again. Okay, so they do have an artifact. So. Oh, that's funny. That's a good comp synergy piece thing to do. I think we're not going to win this game, chat. Just so you can know in advance. Prepare yourself for the worst. Opponent. Why are you spending so long? You're destroying me. I have two cards in play. I had to use two guys to kill a Malkator's Watcher. Even if I draw a Thrun, I'm just going to lose to your Flyers. You don't need to spend ten minutes deciding whether or not to loot. Always loot. That is the say, the way the world works. Always loot. Always loot. That's the way of the world. This is so annoying. My goodness. I don't get frustrated by opponents when they crush me. So much as when they take ten years to loot. Um, bum, 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 bum. Maybe they'll rope and I'll win. That's my new hope. Maybe their internet died and I'm going to win. I shall be victorious despite all odds. This is why you never concede. Okay, never mind. Bum, bum, bum. Ba -dum, bum. Da 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 do. 
Should I exile stuff from my own graveyard? Super foolish of me. <laughs> Not well done. This could be a 3-3 by this point if I just exiled my own hex gold slashes. And then I might have a fighting chance. Not really. Take four. I'm at three. If I draw a kill spell for the Basilica Shepherd, I'm still in it. Da, 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 Yeah. Oh, well done, opponent. You got me. Malkator's Watcher had the last laugh. That's super funny. Oh, well. We ended up getting a positive record with the deck. Let's go! Four and three for the win! Whew! Nice, we got some close wins. That was fun. Won some games on the draw, which was nice. The deck build felt pretty solid. Maybe I should have replaced a furnace started with Chimney Rabble just to try out the Chimney Rabble. People have been telling me they like it, so I like trying out those sorts of cards. But I felt like this deck was pretty nice, and I enjoyed playing it. If you did enjoy this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe for more, and leave... Hashtag in oil we trust down in the comment section down below to let me know you made it all the way till the end of the video because our oil deck was pretty sweet and we did some cool stuff with it like putting oil on the Icker plate golem to win the game and stuff like that. So yeah, if you did enjoy this video and you would like to support my content, you could do so at Patreon, patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. You gain access to cool rewards like being able to do drafts with me when I do patron drafts, accessing my tier list, which has my grades on every card in the set. And things like that. It also helps me make more videos. But yeah, let me know what you thought of the video in the comment section down below. But that's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll talk to you next time.